A few minutes ago, we talked about what that former Portland Korean church meant to some of its most recent members. Now let's take a look back at the deep history of the people who came to Oregon to form the church that later put up that building. After the building was torched, we were prepared to find all kinds of historical facts. But as it turns out, there's not a ton of information that survived over the years. But our friends at the Oregon Historical Society did help us gather some of the things that they could find. In fact, everything they could find in their collection. And we'd like to thank them for the help. Because without them, we wouldn't have enough to bring you a story like this. Anyway, let's get into it. We're going back in time. We'll start here with this directory that was uncovered by the Oregon Historical Society. Now, we don't know the exact year the directory was printed. The date is nowhere on the front or the inside. But our clue comes from the form of the pastor's name, Jacob Stocker. The directory does show that Stocker became the first pastor in 1919. So we know the directory has to be from that year or maybe a little bit later. And we get our first look at the photo of the building on the title page. At this time, it was called the Clay Street Evangelical Church. It went through several name changes that we'll touch on in a minute. But the directory from around a century ago also includes a few pages on the history of the church and the property. And we're going to dive into those details. It's information that you're not going to see or read about anyplace else. This is real history, people. And in our opinion, it's exciting to discover things like this that are often right before our eyes. The church was much more than a bunch of boards and bricks. It was the cornerstone to some very important communities. For this, we're going to go back in time, back to 1875, when a man named Reverend Samuel Henniger came to Oregon to scout missionary opportunities in the state. Remember, back then, Oregon had only been a state for 26 years. So it was certainly a frontier of sorts, not only in terms of timber, but also religion. Henniger was convinced that Portland would be a perfect strategic center for missionary work. In 1876, the Reverend spoke with leaders of the Pacific Conference of the Evangelical Church, saying that he wanted to start up a German mission in Portland. His bosses said, uh, maybe, but definitely not right now. They wanted him to head up an English work in Salem, where he became pastor of Salem Chemeketa Street Church, with the understanding that he would oversee German missionary work in Portland. Well, two years later, he got his wish. In 1877, after beginning missionary work among the German population in Portland suburbs, in November of that year, he preached for the first time in the basement of the English Presbyterian Church at 3rd and Washington Streets, doing so in German. And from a basement of the Presbyterian Church, the congregation began to grow. A new German reverend was sent to Portland in the following year. His name was Reverend H.W. Axthelm. That sound German enough for you? I probably butchered it, but it's a good German name. In November of 1878, a charter group of about 13 people was formed to explore the possibility of building a church for the German congregants, you know, to get out of the Presbyterian's basement. Then came June of 1879, when three trustees were elected to oversee the construction of the new church in Portland. They bought two lots at the corner of 10th and Clay, paying $2,000. According to a few inflation calculators that we checked, that would total around $60,000 in today's numbers. Now, in November of 1879, a reverend by the name of J. Bowersock dedicated the new church, quote, to the service of the triune God, which basically means the idea of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The cost of the lots plus construction of the church and a rectory building right next door brought the cost of the entire project to just over $4,500. In today's terms, that would be about $140,000. Now, at the time of the dedication, there was still debt, $1,700 to be paid, so they sold one of the two lots they originally bought to pay off that debt. The only photo we could find of the old church building comes from an article in the Oregonian from 1990. It was found by researchers at the Oregon State Historical Society. We're focused on the photo on the left. It's a look at the building in the 1880s, so really in the infancy of the church itself. The wooden building could hold around 350 people, and eventually that was not enough. And that brings us to 1905, when a new church and rectory were built for the German congregation. The photo you can see here is an architectural sketch by the man in charge of designing the building, a little-known Portland architect by the name of Henry Dittrich. Let's bring up that photo for a full for you to be able to see it up close. It's gorgeous. It's a grandiose structure described as having a 20th century Gothic style. How about that? 
Now let's compare the sketch with a photo of what the church actually looked like when it was dedicated in 1905. This picture comes from the Oregonian. Looks about right to me. And by the way, the church directory that we showed you earlier from 1919 or later, well, that valued the church and the rectory at $18,000, which in today's terms would be just north of 300 grand. At the time in 1905, the church was called the First German Evangelical Church, and everything was done in the German language. The name of the church was changed to just First Evangelical around the end of World War I. Maybe it was not that great to have the German in the name after the events of the First World War. And then sometime in the 1920s, the use of the German language also during worship was phased out. There were several name changes in the following decades. First Evangelical Reformed Church, First Evangelical United Brethren Church, Clay Street Evangelical Church, the list goes on. But in 1978, the church and its members took their worship to Washington County, where it became known as the Tualatin Valley Community Church. And that's when the Portland Korean Church got its start at the building along Southwest 10th and Clay. One of the first things they did after moving in was remove the original wood siding. They did that in 1980. There's really no record anywhere that we could find as to why they were doing that, but maybe we should just assume that 75 years after it was put on, that old siding needed some TLC. The Korean congregation worshiped there in downtown Portland until they sold the place in 2015, where it sat vacant for years, with plenty of anecdotes arising of squatters taking over inside. The first big problem with the vacant building came in late September of 2020. That's when the first fire tore through parts of the building, and our cameras were there. And all of a sudden, flames started shooting up from the side back of the church, about as high as halfway up, and the fire trucks responded almost immediately and uh, started putting out the fire. And no one knows what happened or what the cause was. Today, we asked Portland Fire about the cause of that 2020 blaze. The investigator at the time deemed it incendiary, which just means there was a fire set where it should not have been. It could have been arson, also could have been squatters lighting a fire inside to keep warm rather than intentionally trying to burn the building. Either way, nobody was held responsible for that fire. And because of the damage to the church in 2020, the building was deemed unsafe. And it just sat there like that until last week, the first week of 2023, when it was torched and then torn down. Preservationists hope that they can salvage some pieces of the old structure, things like the cornerstone and the weather vane. They'll also be looking for any stained glass that survived demolition, which kind of seems unlikely, but there are theories that the glass is from the famed Povey Brothers Art Glass Studio, a Portland-based company known as the Tiffany of the Northwest. Experts told the Oregonian there's no way to definitively say that the windows were from the Povey Brothers because no documentation exists and they rarely signed their work. But hopefully, some of the glass survived so that it can be preserved. Keep sending your questions and comments to the story at kgw.com. We're gonna wrap things up right after this.